Well, hello. Um, this is Sunday this m- today. It's a glorious, glorious morning, and we're at the plot. Um, so we're at the entrance of the plot, as you can see. Uh, marigolds are doing very nicely, and uh, sweet peas are climbing up the cage. And as you can see, we've just started to have our first little flowers. So hopefully we will have a nice display of sweet peas all across the front of the cage. So just a little bit of an overview of the allotment as you can see this as it stands at the moment. It is looking rather lush. So I'll take you for a little tour around and show you how things are doing. Be back in a minute. Right, yeah. So we're back, and we start off with our raspberries. Um, this is what we call Raspberry Alley, um, as you can see. They are all coming on lovely. These are our, our autumn fruit and raspberries. I haven't actually um, put the wires up as yet. So we've got a pathway through the centre, so that we can pick fruit from either side. So that'll be really nice when they do start to come together. As you can see the flowers, fruits are now starting to form. So that's lovely. So we'll have some nice fruits off that. So taking you round past, oh actually, I've just noticed, and you can see there, we've just got our first little fruit starting to come. So, wicked. This is our blackberry, as you can see. The blackberries are really starting to come on now. This is um, in its second year. This it's a thornless, which is fantastic. Um, even the ladybirds are still on it, as you can see there, which is great. Still got a few flowers, um, but it absolutely lays in the blackberries. So I should be making loads of blackberry jam. These are our Logan berries. I'm turning you around. Sorry for spinning you around too quick. Um, and as you can see with the Logan berries, these are now starting to, to fruit and they're coming on lovely. Um, I didn't expect these to fruit this year at all. Um, I'm going to say Monty Don said it takes a few years for them to establish. But as you can see, as they're coming on great. It's brilliant. And I'll say the first one here, that's on here. It's first year. And we have um, a dahlia down here. I'm not quite sure whether this is the pom pom one. Let me have a quick look for you. Sorry. Oh, this is one of the cacti pom-poms um, from Wilco's. So we'll see how that one does. So, turn it around. This is now the um, blackcurrant, which I'm going to pick today. Um, absolutely laden, as you can see. It's uh, falling down with the weight of the berries. Look at those little bits, as you can see, there's loads on there. So, absolutely loads. These um, two big um, bushes that you can see is what we were given from one of our friends off the allotments, um, and then we bought two smaller um, black currants. So, um, yeah, no, even they're bushing as well, so we've got lots of fruits off those. Um, there's our plum tree with this wasp catcher hanging on it. And then at the very back are um, the golden raspberries, which have gone absolutely ballistic. At the far end is the um, horseradish, and that's doing really well. And then here are our strawberries. Um, whether you can see those strawberries in there. 
absolutely loads and um, we've had loads and loads it's actually flowering again so <laughs> it's gone absolutely ballistic let's see if you can see some of these the size on these have been enormous we have had some really good sized fruits off these um, these ones we had from uh, B&Q um, Buddy is the variety we've had of these but they've been fabulous um, but like I say they have been they are starting to flower again so you never know we're going to have some more so fantastic um, these are the gooseberries I'm not quite sure what's happened with this one but we've got three four in total but these three here have not yielded at all the one on the end we've had loads of it absolutely loads but i don't know what happened with these three so a little bit of research unless anyone can tell me and this is a little standard that we put in and then the apples um this is our apple tree which is a bramley and as you can see we had lovely blossoms on it and we've got some beautiful fruits on it this year. I am so, so surprised. Um, it's had the June drop, um, as you can see on the floor. A few fruits on the floor. Um, but yeah, and then we've got two more cacti, um, some dahlias down here. And this one is now starting to, oh, and the other one is starting to get the heads on them to flower. So again, we should have some uh, dahlias just to give a little bit of a colour down the bottom. So I'll take you back down. Oh, and I also popped in um, a little dahlia in down here as well. But that's where the dahlias went. Right, um, just pop into the cage now. As you can see, rice is getting a little bit full down here. Um, we've got our courgettes in here. Um, We've put two lots sorts of courgettes. Let me take you down. Let's see if you can see those there. These are the little round um, courgettes. And then we have got also the normal courgettes, the normal green ones. But as you can see, looking very lush. Um, and we also did put in some tomatoes at the back here. We've also got some lettuce which are hiding, which are just hearting up lovely. These are ice big lettuce, but they are hearting up beautifully. There's a couple of peppers also, they are getting a bit sheltered, so we may have to move those. But we'll see, we'll see. Um, also got some, um, some marigolds in here to got some companion planting. We've also got some more of those gorgets. You can see them there. With these, we will um, let them bore a little bit more and then I shall take the tops off them. I will then scoop out the centres and fill them with some sun dried peppers and some cheese and some onion and bits and pieces like that and then pop them back in the oven um, with the tops back on them and then roast them, that'd be lovely um, and then I've also got my herbs, I've got some parsley, some fat leaf parsley some basil and then over here which is getting overrun by the fat leaf parsley is my thyme so yeah, looks brilliant now here um, these are my old one peas. This is what we've grown this year. And um, I've done these in four stages. So this is the, the, the last that you've seen at the moment. So this is a week, like the fourth setting. Um, so let me just show you what I mean. I'll come back out again from the cage. So half of this one is week three, week four. So, um, but if I take you around the other side of the frame, you'll see how how big they are have grown they have grown really tall and as you can see we've got some beautiful pods on there gone right to the top 
and I did sell it. They grew to six foot, and as you can see, they've gone mad. Absolutely mad. Um, these are the old one peas. Um, their pods are lovely. Absolutely lovely. We've got loads and loads of pods on there. Lovely white flowers also. Um, and in the corner, or oh, in the, these ones, we've got our mini muncher cucumbers, which are just starting to go up. These are outdoor varieties, so they're just uh, taking off now. And again, marigold there as well. Um, this is our strawberry bed, which is in the cage. This was, didn't, we had a bit of a funny start with this bed. Um, we're having a bit of trouble with it. Um, strawberries are now starting to come on it, but as you can see, it's a little bit sparse. Um, nowhere near as good as the other, our other bed. But hopefully it'll pick up. And I have, over the back there are our tomatoes. Um, we've got three varieties of tomatoes there. Um, over the very back, I'll just take you around actually, it'll be better. You'll be able to see better. Right, and we've got um, one, two, three, four, five, five sweet aperitifs. These are the um, little cherry ones. Um, I don't know whether you can see, but um, just turn it around a bit. But these are all on strings that are going straight to the top and tied off at the very top. Um, and we're winding the um, strings up um, around the the main stem of the cordon tomatoes. So, five at the back are the sweet aperitifs. Then we've got some marmandi. One, two, three, four marmandi. Five over the far side at the back. Two more mini miniature cucumbers. And then the rest of these on, this, on here are crimson crush. So all outdoor varieties but I'm growing them in this cage. So, and then we've also got the marigolds, just to give it some uh, companion planting. Um, we've got the sweet aperitifs are all being grown, as you can see, in the halos. And we're gonna see what difference it makes. Um, halos where we water into the, into the halos, and then we feed into the main pots. The same with these. Um, with the tomatoes here, well, you can see there is a black pot there which we water into, which goes right down to the root. But then we do water onto the stem when we do the feeds. And um, we've now got two trusses, as you can see, two trusses. We're in the nice of it. Um, so we're now uh, feeding twice a week. Same as this one, two trusses. We've actually got some tomatoes growing on this one. So, yeah, so we're watering twice a week. A uh, feeding twice a week now, which is great. Yep, take you down to this one. See, these are the Crimson Crush. And we have got um, tomatoes on those, which is great. Um, over on the front, um, where the courgettes are, that's also got uh, Crimson Crush. Okay, just spin you around a little bit. So, this is that bed of rhubarb, which we've got nine plants in. And that is, even though we've completely harvested and took loads and loads of rhubarb off it, it's all coming back again, <laughs> which is lovely. Okay, so um, these are our main crop of um, onions, white onions. So we've got Sturon, we've got Stuttgarter, we've got Fen Red, Fen Early, which are both heat treated, and then on the end here we've got Rumba. So they're all doing really well, and they've got some good sized ones in here. Um, so yeah, yeah, we're really looking forward to harvesting these a bit later on in the year. They they are doing exceptionally well. I think we um, planted 
down in the region of 230 onions. So, really looking forward to those. As you can see, some of them are of a real good size, these onions. So, yeah, fabulous. Fabulous. And then over here, um, we've planted up. I know somebody mentioned in our last video it's a bit late in putting in these um, butternut squash, but they'll be fine. They'll soon catch up. As you can see, they're starting to romp away. Um, I'm leaving them in, in this bed, they've got the whole bed. And there's two this end and two the other end. These are the Hunter F1s. These um, shallots are nearly ready. And the onions that you can see are um, the overwintering onions. They're starting to go over now the, the head, so they should be not far off in uh, being lifted soon. As you can see, some of these onions are and they come in, come in quite into like good sizes. So I don't need to be too far off now. Right, taking you back round. We've got some iceberg lettuce, which are coming on grand in the middle of the um, A-frame of our lagoon bed. So these are our um, Monge 2, as you can see they're the purple pods. And if I'm not mistaken these are called Shiraz. So they're doing really well. Um, next one along is the French beans and again they've got nice flowers on them they're climbing up brilliantly come going right to the top as you can see there so again they're coming on grand and then we've got um, our French beans and again sorry not French beans I should say these are uh, our runner beans and we've got two varieties in here. Summer medley is the one variety that I can remember off the top of my head. Um, and I can't quite remember what the other one is. But yeah, they're doing really good. They're uh, doing grand. They've gone right to the top as you can see. Brilliant. Okay. So over on the far bed, you can see there, we've got our um, Swiss chard, which is now ready for harvesting. We've also got the beetroot, which is um, coming on great, this beetroot. It should be coming on for harvesting soon. We've um, got celery, which is the layer of them south blanching. So that'll do grand, and then um, gladiator parsnips, which are also doing fabulous. Over in this bed, um, which is all covered up, we've got a variety in here. So we've got cauliflower on the end here, we've got turnips, we've got swedes, and I don't know whether you're going to see any of this really. Let's have a look. Um, we've got broccoli, which is Iron Man. We've then got um, cabbages which are starting to heart up lovely. I'm just give this a quick lift up so I can show you inside. There you go. Cauliflowers on the end. This is the uh, cabbages which give me a label. Right, cauliflowers which is successional ones. Successional F1s, cabbages which are golden acre, and like I say, this is the broccoli which I know is Iron Man. Let's put the as you can see, they're all doing really good. Really, really pleased with these. We always put, oh, well, you can see down there, um, the collars on them. Uh, we always line the bed of the plant pot, um, planted hole I should say, once we 
come to do the planting of the um, baskers and then we always put these collars around them afterwards just to be on the safe side really okay, I'll just put this down okay so over in this bed which is covered in all the carrots oh, take you right in so you can see those Um, and then I'll just show you over in this bed. These are our potatoes. These are our carvers. As you can see, as you can see there, they are doing fabulous. Flowers are on them now, and they're doing really well. They're coming on fantastically. So these were planted first, and over on this bed here. Sorry for turning you around there, but we've got our, our Maris Pier, which are the purple um, flowers that you can see there. And again, they were earthed up three times, so they've got real good earthing up on these, as you can see. And then on the other row of potatoes, we have our Desiree. And again, as you can see, flowers are coming up lovely nice rows so over here in this bed which was the one that was covered with the micro mesh and um, these are our carrots as I don't know, you can see that they have actually we have taken some of these and they are looking lovely and um, we've got some chilies which as you can see there there's some little little chilies starting to form on the plants now which is great these here are uh, Chinese leaves which some of them have had a little bit of a going over so we've had to put some pellets down but this little row here is doing fabulous that's doing brilliantly and then next to that we've got some a little bit of spinach right so that's that um, and then here we've got some leeks that we've put in let's just check what these are yeah these are the salt and f ones so these have gone in and as you can see they're looking fine and dandy and then here we've got some peppers um, and then interplanted with that we've got some pak choy and again, the peppers are looking absolutely brilliant. Loving this micro mesh, absolutely loving it. And then on the end here, we've got some more um, celery, some um, some more of this lay themselves blanching celery. Thought I'd try some outside in the open and also under the micro mesh to see if there's any difference. Okay, so I'll uh, just. Spin you around, show you the the bed, show it see so you can see what it looks like. So it's looks looking really good. So further coming further up the, the plot. This is what we work where my husband is working very, very busily. I'll take you up onto the, the decking. As we now got a bit of decking up here. Um he's in the process of now planting. So what are you planting? Well, I'm putting in Brussels sprouts and they are called Brody. They're a little bit late going in, but hey -o, you'll have to excuse me. I suffer from hay fever, so I get the old runny noses, sneezes and everything. So that's the why the wife's doing the uh, allotment tour today, because otherwise yours you'd hear was me sniffing. And that's not very nice. Right. Dug the holes quite deep, deeper than the pots, because they like to be down and the more you get up the stem, the less rocking you'll have on the plant. I've watered the holes, some lime in both holes, and we have found, not advertising, these are great for storing your lime, your powdered lime in. It's easy to carry, carry around the plot and it keeps it very dry. So. 
Right, I'll just show you the root system on these. Yes, they are quite good. Obviously they mer a lot. Should have been in a while ago, but hey ho, they're going in today. So we'll go out the way. You can see how deep they actually go in. Right in. Saw right on them. Nice, give it a good, it likes it tight. It does. So the tighter you can get it, the better. And then just to top it off, we always put a collar on it to stop. There's an insect that actually lays its eggs at the bottom of the plant. And once the eggs hatch, they will have your nice little plant for tea. So this will stop it. You get them at the end of the season, they're only about 50p, they should be. They should be 3 99 but we pick them up for around about 50 pence and they are well worth it to save your crops. Just pop it round the bottom of the plant. Make sure all the leaves are out the way, nicely in. And that's it. It's ready for watering and growing. So I'll hand you back to the wife. Bye for now. So that's it then. You've had a good overview of the plot as you can see it. Um, we've not put up um, videos um, recently. Um, we've had a, sadly a bereavement in the family so we were a little bit behind. Um, but we are start, starting to catch up a little bit now. So hopefully we'll be able to put some more videos up. So for now... I think that's, um, that'll be it for us this week. We hope everybody's in, enjoying the gardening. Um, hope everyone's plants are coming on grand and you're um, now starting to see the fruits of your labour. So, for me, it's Tara. And for me, bye. Take care and happy gardening. Thank you for all your subscribe subscriptions. Thank you for liking, sharing and your continued support. Bye for now.